In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. How many of you remember Show and Tell? As many of you might recall, Show and Tell was a time when, whether in kindergarten or for others, perhaps even pre-kindergarten, It was a time when each child took a turn bringing something to show his or her classmates. And in addition to showing the object that they brought, the child would tell his or her classmates something about that object. Show and tell was a staple of early childhood education, indeed still is. And it's the method by which so many of us learned some of our earliest and most practical life lessons. On that first Easter morning, at the tomb in the garden where the body of Jesus had been laid, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, they experienced the show and tell quite literally of biblical proportion a show-and-tell that changed them and changed all of us forever. The angelic young man they encountered in the tomb showed them the empty place where Jesus had been laid. And he encouraged them not to be alarmed. And then he told them that Jesus had been raised. After this first Easter show and tell, the three women were commissioned to go and tell, to go and tell the disciples of Jesus that he was alive and that they would encounter him in Galilee. Mark's gospel goes on to tell us that the three women fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Fear is one of our most basic, fundamental human feelings. Despite stories describing the hero as fearless, for most of us, I dare say for all of us, living life without fear is simply unrealistic. Violence, Crime, serious illness, poverty, the debilitating effects of age. There are so many realities in life that can cause us to be afraid. Perhaps the truest sign of living a life of faith is not that we are immune to fear, but rather that we do not let our fears get the better of us. We do not let our fear paralyze us. As the saintly Mother Teresa would tell her sisters, it's okay to be afraid. It's not okay to be afraid and do nothing. (laughs) Thankfully, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, These three women overcame their fears, and they shared the good news of the resurrection with the other disciples. They became the apostles to the apostles, proclaiming the resurrection of Christ. Like these three women at the empty tomb, St. Peter also wrestled with his fears. Faith in the risen Christ changed him from a man dominated by his fears, even to the point of denying Jesus, to a man who proclaimed the good news of God's infinite love, even to the point of death. When it comes to sharing your faith in the risen Christ, what are you afraid of? Allow me to echo the wise words of Mother Teresa. It's okay to be afraid. 
It's not okay to be afraid and do nothing. Our faith in the risen Jesus is a gift. And trusting in this precious gift, we can find the courage to act and even act joyfully in spite of our fears. The new buzz phrase in public safety is see something, say something. Through the eyes of faith, you and I have seen the risen Jesus. We have heard the good news. We have experienced the immeasurable joy of the resurrection. I encourage you this Easter to give to the risen Christ your fears, to give to the risen Jesus your doubts, to give to our risen Lord any obstacle that it is in your way on your journey of faith. Give them over to Jesus and let the risen Jesus give to you the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us. It will empower you to find your voice so that like the women at the empty tomb, like Peter and the other apostles, like the disciples of the early church, and like the faithful through the decades and centuries and millennia, we too can share the good news of the risen Christ. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.